Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege, and I want to try making a helicopter powered and controlled entirely by ropes. The ropes and winches can deliver a good amount of power, but as you'll see, they're a little awkward to work with and require some interesting solutions. So, let's get right into it. So I'm just loading into the sandbox now, and you see the first thing I'm doing here is just building up some wood. So what I want to do is start building the engine. Now I'm going to use the engine to power the main rotor and the tail rotor, so if I don't have a good engine, I'm really not going to be able to do this at all. So it seemed like a good starting point here, and the first thing I'm doing is building up a bit of a crank. Now, really, there's no reason to make it this complicated, but I felt like it, so starting out, putting down the rope winch like this onto the crank, and it should be able to contract and pull the rope to make the crank move. Now, also I learned a neat trick here. You can see I'm turning up the speed of the rope winch to two times, but if I use a spring, you can turn the strength up to 10 times. And for some reason, you can copy it over to the rope winch and get 10 times speed. I don't know why that works, but it does. And you can get something that's effectively five times as fast. So after I put that in place, you can see I'm giving it a shot and you can see how it pulls and contracts on the crank like that. Now I'm not getting any rotation yet, and it's just because I need a second crank and another rope to get this to work. So you can see here, I'm putting in that second crank like this. After I get that done, put down a second rope winch, copy over its stats to get that extra speed and just giving it a shot here by manually turning it by hitting keys it's not that bad but it's not really working so it does move back and forth and it rotates quite a bit but it's deforming quite badly and i'm not getting a continuous rotation in one direction so to hopefully fix that first thing i did is got rid of this whole crank thing because it's a little over complicated and i could simplify this a lot just by using a single log now to do that you can see here i'm putting down some ropes like this after i get that done you can see it's kind of similar to before i don't get continuous rotation in one direction but it's not really sagging as badly and it seems to snap right into place so i figure with some automatic control maybe i can get this to work so i'm starting out here you can see I'm putting down a sensor and I'm putting down two logs on the crankshaft. Now as the crankshaft rotates those logs will come in front of the sensor and the sensor is going to see that. Now you can use these two logic gates that I just put in place to sort of decode that information and figure out when the ropes need to pull and when they need to release the rope to make this rotate. And you can see here under the automatic control it's definitely better but it's still not quite there. It bounces back and forth quite a bit and never quite settles on one direction. So to hopefully improve this a bit what I wanted to do is add on two more ropes. Now to do that you can see I'm just putting on the sides of the log like that and I'm adding on two more wood logs onto the crankshaft so the sensor is going to see four logs per rotation. After I got that in place what I wanted to do now is just make sure that the two logic gates were actually detecting the logs properly and once that looked good enough I added on four more logic gates one for each of the ropes and these are all going to detect when the ropes need to be pulling and contracting. Once I set up the logic properly it kind of worked. It sometimes just jittered into place, but it seemed to have a little bit of trouble. And the problem was that I really needed to start unwound. The starting unwound does basically what it says. It just makes the rope start completely unwound. And once I did this, it seemed to improve things a lot. You can see the rotation getting out of this is really constant. And with that done, I turned up the speed to 10 times once again and wanted to see how it would do. But I broke this log. And it was interesting because I had unbreakable mode on. So I have no idea how that happens. But giving it a shot, it seemed to work, but not super well. Now you can see how badly the log is sagging and pulling down the swivel joint, but also you can see the rotation is just not constant. It speeds up then slows down and it's not really working. Now I figured I could probably solve this problem by adding on a second set of ropes. Now if I flip these over and put them on top, they should pull on the log equally to the ropes in the bottom and it should balance out the forces and make it a little bit better. Now after messing around with it for a bit to make sure they're all facing the right direction, I just made sure to pin that in place and I gave it a shot here and it didn't look too good at first, but when I slowed down, you can see here the rotation is pretty constant and especially once I have the propeller on here acting as a flywheel, it should work pretty well. So with that done, next thing I wanted to do is add on the propeller, and for that I put down some gears like this, and I was hoping to increase the speed of the output shaft by two times, but I accidentally put the gears in the wrong orientation, and it's actually dividing the speed by two. So after just flipping them around correctly, I put down this long rod, and on that I'm putting down my propeller blades. Now when I went to give it a shot here, nothing seemed to happen, and the problem is actually that the engine was attached to the rod that I just put in place. So I had to fix that. After that, put down some wheels like this, and it just attached everything together, got rid of all the pins and let it go. And you can see here, it's pulling itself through the air. So actually seems to be working and I'm hoping I can use this engine design to make the helicopter. So you can see here, all I did was copy over what I had and just rotated it 90 degrees. Now, once I did this, I actually realized I can improve the engine a little bit by rotating the sensor slightly. And this makes it detect the blades just a little bit earlier than usual. And this ends up improving the timings a lot. And you can see here, it's rotating really well. So once I had that done, next thing I wanted to do is add on the propellers and I messed around for a little bit, but this is the design I ended up settling with. So I have four of these 
heavy swivel joints that I'm putting in place, and on them, I'm putting the propeller blades. Now, you can see here, once I try to make it go, the propeller blades just swivel back and forth on the swivel joints. It doesn't really seem to be working out that well. The thing is, though, I can use these swivel joints to pull back and forth on the propeller blades, and when I do that, I can adjust their angle that they're pushing through the air, and therefore, I can adjust how much thrust is being produced on which part of the blade, and that's the basic idea of a swash plate. So, in here, what I'm doing is putting out a bunch of ropes, and I should be able to use these to pull back and forth on each side of the swivel joint, and when I give it a test here, you can see it's holding it pretty level, but it is swiveling back and forth a little bit because the ropes don't pull super tight. Now, when I tried pulling on the ropes to rotate it, it did work, but I rotated it too far and it actually flipped completely over. So I'm going to have to refine this design quite a bit before I do too much more with it. But since I had a way to hold the blades relatively stable, what I wanted to do was try to see if this could even get off the ground. So first thing I'm doing here, you can see it's just putting down some logs to hold everything in place. And it was a little bit unbalanced, so I'm putting down some logs in the front to keep it slightly more balanced. And here, once it ran into this log, it was actually just enough to get it completely off the ground, and you can see it got a considerable distance up. Now, it lost control, but that's not really that big of a problem. All I needed to see here was that it could get itself off the ground, and for that, it seems like it can. So to hopefully fix those blades from being so loose, what I wanted to do is first lift this off the ground, and add a little bit of control on the bottom. Now, you can see here I have this one wood piece just floating in the air, and what I'm going to do is pull on that piece using some ropes. Now, all of the ropes that are attached to the swivel joints are going to be on this block, so as this block gets pulled down by these ropes like I have it right here, what it's going to do is tension them slightly, and that should prevent them from just swiveling back and forth slightly. So you can see here, I'm putting in all those ropes right now, and once I have all those in place, I'm giving it a shot, and as I tension the ropes, it kind of pulls everything down a little bit, but it did seem to have those ropes move back and forth just a little bit. Now, this design was kind of slightly flawed, actually, and the first thing I realized that I have way too much wood. So first thing I'm doing is getting rid of all the wood, and I'm replacing it with ballast. Now, using ballast and braces is much better than using wood, because the ballast, I can set their weight to be literally anything, so I can have it be like a tenth of the weight of the wood, and then the braces weigh very little as well, so I'm going to attach things at pretty long distances using stuff that just doesn't weigh that much. Now you can see here what I'm doing is actually doubling up the ropes I have powering the engine just like I had on the previous design. I'm just putting it on the other side, and this just helps with balance and stuff and keeps it a little bit more under control. Now the change I'm making here, it's probably a little surprising, is that I'm actually going to be deleting the swash plate mechanism that I made before. Now I know I just got it working with that tensioning design, but the problem is that tensioning design is actually pretty large and it's not that great. Now the other problem with the design is that right now I have it working so that I can tilt up and down so that I can make the whole thing move up and down, but to get controls working so that I can get the helicopter to move forward and back or left and right, it just doesn't really work that well. I need to add in some sort of logic gates to have it mix properly, and I realized here having a purely mechanical linkage do all of this would be a lot easier than trying to make this work with some weird logic gate stuff. So what I'm doing here is actually starting over. You can see I have my four swivel joints, my four propeller blades, just like I had before, but the system I'm going to use to control these is going to be really different. Now also here I'm putting the propeller blades further out from the center, and just getting more airspeed on these blades allows me to get a bit more thrust. So after locking all these blades together, you can see here it actually does a lot better than before, and this is already looking a lot better. So the one thing I did before starting to work on the swash plate was actually add in a tail. Now here I'm going to be using a wheel to spin up the blades, and this is only temporary. I'm eventually going to connect it to the main engine, but it's just easier for now to have it not connected since it kind of interferes with it in a weird way. And to start working on the new swash plate mechanism, the first thing you see I'm doing is putting in a suspension block. Now that seems a little weird, but what I can do is use ropes to pull on that suspension block, and when I release the ropes, the suspension is going to naturally want to decompress, and I can use this motion to push and pull on the swivel joint on the bottom, and I can use that swivel joint to push on the blades to move them up and down. Now this first test was a complete failure, mainly because I attached a swivel joint directly to the other swivel joints, and they kind of locked each other together, and what I really need here is another degree of freedom. So I'm adding in a hinge so I can move up and down the blades, and you can see here how that works. So as I pull up and down on the swivel joint, it actually changes the angle of all the blades, and I should be able to use this to move up. Now, that didn't happen here, I just sort of fell straight down, and it's because I need a little bit more thrust. Now to fix this, I can actually double up the amount of propellers I have on each of the blades, and once I do this, you can see I actually get a little bit of thrust going upward, but eventually loses control and starts going down. Now the next thing I'm doing is actually removing the hinges and replacing them with ball joints. Now the hinges allow me to swivel up and down, but the ball joints allow me to also swivel left and right. Now the advantage of doing this is going to allow me to also add in the forward and backward and left and right mechanisms, since those are going to rely on me swiveling back and forth. Now the ball joints are a lot 
lot more unstable on the hinges though, and you can see as they try to move in slow motion here, it's a complete disaster. And when it moves fast as well, one side ends up lifting up a lot more than the other side, and it just ends up not working at all. So to hopefully fix the problem, I wanted to move in the blades slightly, because having them be not as long, I should be able to get a bit more control over them. But even this, as I try to spin it up, you can see one side ends up lifting up a lot more, and the other side stays down. And to finally fix this problem, what I did is push out all of the ball joints, one block to the very edge of the propeller blade, and this gave me a lot more authority and ended up making it a lot easier to control them. So with the up and down looking pretty good, what I wanted to do is add on the forward and backward control. Now to do this is pretty similar to how I did the other one. I have a suspension block like this, and I'm going to be pulling it in and out just like I'm demoing here, and this will allow me to move the entire swivel joint forward and back, and you'll see how that affects the propeller. Now here I'm adding in those two ropes, and you can see how they pull in and push out the suspension, and I'm just connecting it up to the propeller blade. You can see here as I push it back, the back part of the propeller blade moves up, and this is exactly what I want to see. That means there's going to be more thrust in the back, and it's going to tilt the entire helicopter forward. So I basically just did the same thing, but also added ropes onto the front so I can pull the whole thing forward as well, and this will allow me to create net thrust backwards so I can rotate the entire helicopter backward. Now, I also wanted to add on a bit more thrust, so to do that, I doubled the amount of propeller blades I had once again, and once the forward and backward is looking good, all those left to do is add on the left and right, and this is actually really easy to do, so I can just copy over what I had pretty much exactly, and you can see here I can move the swivel joint up and down, forward and backward, and left and right. So with this, I should be able to mix the controls from all of these and get the propeller blades to create thrust exactly where I need them to. And give it a go now, just by connecting it all up here, you can see it looks pretty good. As I move it side to side, it does lift up one side and the other side. As I move it forward and backward, it does end up lifting the front and back of the propeller. It's pretty subtle. Now, giving it a test here, you can see it does work. It ends up flipping over, but I can definitely feel the controls are doing something. But to keep it from just flipping over like that, what I wanted to do is add in a stability bar like this. Now, the stability bar, what I have is two masses on the end of it, and they're going to be spinning around at a pretty high speed along with the propeller. And this bar is going to resist changing the plane that it's rotating in. And what this means is as the helicopter starts to rotate, this bar is not going to want to rotate with it, and what it's going to do is try to pull in the swash plate in the other direction to stop it from rotating. Now, the effect is not that pronounced, actually, but you can see there, I didn't flip over before I hit the ground. Now, this also adds a lot of mass and complexity, which isn't awesome, and I'd rather not have that, so you can see in the final design, I actually end up doing away with it, but for now, it's a little helpful, so I kept it on. Now, as I was going on about that, you can see what I was doing is trying to make the tail be powered by the main rotor. So I had on a gear in the back, and you can see here, I have some gears in the front as well, and as the main propeller spins, you can see that this large gear ends up spinning as well, and I couple that directly to the gear in the back. So to do that, put down three swivel joints, and just have to connect it up to the gear in the back, and once I do that, I end up making a linkage that allows the motion to be transferred over to the back, and all that's left to do is really add in the propeller blades and have it start spinning. After putting these large propeller blades, you can see here, it spins up fine, and looks good. And after quite a bit of testing, I realized there's a lot of instability with how this rotates. You can see here, the blades end up fluttering up and down a lot, and forward and backward, and the problem is just that the swivel joint in the bottom isn't very well secured by this mechanism. So to hopefully stiffen it up a bit, what I'm doing is adding on some more suspension pieces further out from the other ones, and this allows me to get a lot better control over the swash plate, and it keeps the blades much closer to where they're supposed to be. So after I got that control put in place, I also put in two more on the top, and I'm just adding in one more for the side-to-side -side control. Now what I'm doing here also is switching out all of the wood with ballast. Now it can decrease their mass quite a bit, and really not compromise too much on the strength, and after I had that done, you can see here, this first flight is actually looking really good. It seems to be kind of controlling itself, but I am slowly falling down. Now after that test, what I wanted to do was set this on the ground. And the main reason for that is I just wanted to have a test where this actually took off, went somewhere, and then landed. I figured that would definitely count as a successful flight. So what I did, just added on some legs like this. Need to brace them together a little bit more. After that, turn on the engine, let it take off. And you can see here, it does get off the ground, but it's very hard to control and I end up hitting the ground once again and then flipping over. And it seemed like this thing had just enough power to maintain flight. And I was hoping to increase it a little bit more so that there's a little bit more wiggle room so that I was actually able to fly where I wanted to go and not have to worry too much about perfect movements. So what I did is just doubled up the amount of ropes on the engines, hopefully get a little bit more power out of this. And it seemed to do that. And what I noticed, it also doubled the torque on the entire body, which means that this back rotor is no longer doing its job. It's just sort of rotating out of control anyway. So I tried increasing the amount of blades by two, but this caused it to go crazy. So I also had to increase the strength of it a bit. And after that, I wanted to take off, but it's 
still just started rotating out of control. The back rotor just was not doing its job anymore. So finally what I did is actually doubled the speed of the back rotor by adding on a small gear like this. Now I connected up, I just used a single swivel joint and it's kind of a weird design I have going on here. I've never done this sort of linkage before, but it ended up working out reasonably well. So what I'm doing is putting down a swivel joint in the back, just like I had in the first one. And I had to shrink it down so it would fit in place. And after I did that, I just used a bracing piece to connect it up to the front. And when I spun up the engine, you can see here with just a single bracing piece, I'm actually managing to spin the back rotor. Now I don't show this, but I actually added on a second swivel joint and bracing piece so that it kept this moving in the same direction. It was a little annoying at startup, it randomly pick a direction and it was sometimes picked the wrong one and it's kind of hard to fix which direction it was going. Now I tried a whole bunch of things to get this working, like adding on a second propeller blade. That didn't really seem to fix things at all. And I realized what I wanted to do was just add on some balloons temporarily and I just wanted to see once I had a little bit more thrust, what was my main problem? And it just seemed to be the way that I had set up the swash plate controls was actually very difficult to make work right. Now the problem with these rope controls, as you can see here, right now I don't have start unwound on. And if I try to give it a test, as I move them back and forth, I could put them wherever I want, but the thing is, if I pull them too far and then let them go back to the center, you can see how there's a certain amount of lag before they start pulling over to the other side again. Now this is a massive problem because that means as I use this helicopter more and more, it's going to degrade more and more, and eventually, actually pretty quickly, it's going to become completely useless. Now if I try and start unwound on, which is what I've been using, it works a little bit differently. Now if I try to make it go in one direction, you can see here it starts to move over to the one side, but if I hit that direction again, instead of adding to it, it actually resets it back to the center. Center. So this means that if I want to make it go over to one side slightly, it's kind of hard to get that right. And if I keep tapping one control, instead of making it go in that direction, it just keeps resetting it. It doesn't do anything. There's a very unintuitive way to fly, but the advantage is if I go all the way over to one extreme or the other, it ends up not having that lag time in the middle. So it's just consistently bad instead of getting worse and worse over time. Unfortunately, these ropes are just kind of bad, and this is really the best that I can do. So if you're finally getting those fixed, you can see here what I'm doing is just extending out the propeller blades a little bit more, and I'm I was hoping this would give me a lot more thrust. But on top of that, what I also wanted to do was double the amount of blades I had. So in theory, this should be a lot better, but just stacking them on like this wasn't the best. They kind of got out of control easily and flipped over. So I ended up moving them down to be on the same block as the other ones. After doing that for all the sides, I gave it another test here. And it seemed to be creating a lot of thrust upward. And finally, I actually had something that wasn't that bad. So with a little bit more practice, what I wanted to do was try to just fly around a bit and see how well I could do it. And it wasn't great. You see here, sometimes I got out of control and had to do a big correction. But otherwise, it wasn't terrible. And after a little bit more refinement, what I did is just shrunk down all the logic, stuck it on the side of the helicopter like this. And just to finish finish it off, I wanted to add on some crossbows to the front. Now what I did is just turned up the rate of fire and power a ridiculous amount, and you can see here it's going pretty fast. Now interestingly enough, you can see here when it's on, it actually does push back the helicopter slightly, but this shouldn't be too big of a problem in flight. Here I tried with cannons, and you can see that was a massive problem. The kickback from this cannon just completely flipped me over. But with the helicopter basically done, I wanted to try flying over this mountain and see how well it worked. Now the controls are still very rough, but it is actually able to be controlled in one specific direction, as long as you have a lot of patience and are really, really paying attention to it. Now after I flew over this mountain and accidentally tapped it a little bit, I wanted to land on the other side, and it wasn't the best landing ever because I ended up landing sideways. If I had wider landing gear, I probably could have had that down, but otherwise, flight went pretty well. And see here I have another flight where I'm just flying around the sandbox map, and for the most part, I can pretty much go where I want to go. So guys, thanks for watching. It's definitely a very long video to make. There's a lot of stuff I unfortunately just had to cut out because there just wasn't enough time to show it all. But I'm glad I got it working as well as it was, and if I ever make one of these in the future, I am not using ropes again. So if you liked the video, like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And otherwise, until next time.